Years ago, we used to do these haircuts with a cereal bowl. That was scary. Oh yeah, where's the bowl? Feels like I just got a haircut two weeks ago and it feels like I got a wool sheep head right now. It's the wrong one. Is he making fun of me? I'm not doing nothing, I was rubbing my nose. Thank you, Mama Cornstar, for cutting my hair. <laughs> Ain't done. Oh, we're not done? And you guys were wondering if I was gonna get hair like Cole and Cooper's. Ah! <laughs> no. Oh. I feel like the dog that's at the kennel getting a good grooming. I feel like that dog. Now I don't have to wash my hair for another month. Kind of like when you're at the veterinarian and they're working on your teeth and cleaning them and stuff. You sit here and you just don't know what to do. You said the veterinarian. Oh, I did? Mm-hmm. Oh. You getting your rabies shot? I probably should, just because of who I'm hanging around. <laughs> abuse! Abuse! And when a beautician is all done with your hair, it's always good to give them a good tip. Keep practicing. You will get better. Mama Cornstar, what? thank you so much for making me presentable to be beside you. You're welcome. I think tonight we're going to do date night. We're going to go out. We're going to go eat. We're going to go do something just to get out together. You know why? That way I can show off Mama Cornstar. And I think she got some free coupons. You know what happened to my broom? I think Cole took it over to his house to sweep up... Uh, Hey, did I brush my teeth this morning? I'm trying to think. Oh, it drives me crazy if I forget to brush my teeth, but I think... I was wondering what that smell was. No, I think I did. Oh, let's see what we got here. I guess, I guess I never even gave it a thought. I apologize. I guess I gotta have an intro. Hello, everybody. If you're new to this show and don't know who I am, I am Daddy Cornstar. Or you can just call me DC. And this is mine and Mama Cornstar's channel. Mama Cornstar is a, well, how do I say it? She's my wife. Reading the comments this morning. And before I get that far, I wanna thank everybody for joining up. But I read a comment this morning that says, DC, I'm asking for a friend. You don't have to ask for a friend. You can ask for yourself. This is our channel. This is your channel. This is my channel. This is Mama Cornstar's channel. But somebody asked, Daddy Cornstar, if you read all the comments, why do you never comment? That is a very, very good question. And the answer is, I asked Cole that question and he goes, oh, Dad, we never got your phone set up because even when I go to hit the like button, it wouldn't let me do it. And... I guess I'm not signed up for YouTube. Can you believe that? So we gotta get Cole, get me signed up for this stuff so I can get on there. I'm probably not the best at answering questions, but it still would be fun to answer some of you guys' questions. I do try to answer them here on the YouTube station. Trying to think what's been going on lately. It's been kind of that time of year. Cash rents are due on some of our farms that we rent and trying to get around. And I always like to spend some time with the landlords when I get to their house. and. So you try to get things scheduled out or some of them stop here also. But it's just so nice to sit and visit with them. I was with one of my landladies last night. And, you know, it's just fun to hear stories from when she was a little girl and, you know, how she's raised her family. Uh, it's just, I don't know. I just like talking to people and you know, like yesterday, I spent probably the whole day just kind of running around talking to them. And you think, hey, I didn't get nothing done at home. But it's really important to spend time, even with people you know down the road or something. If you know people that are sitting at home and stuff, and pick up the phone, give them a call. Oh, update, update on our 2745, the one that decided to snap an axle off the tractor. Come back here, I'll show you so you guys know which one I'm talking about. Sometimes I forget, you know, I get talking about things and I take it for granted and I know different people talk about different equipment to me. If it's something you're not around, I don't know the numbers always. So this is the 2745 or backwards, 5472. But the 2745, 
the axle broke off here on Cooper when he was out mowing some drawways. We had a guy from Kansas reach out to us right away that got the parts for us. And he's planning on coming out here probably the beginning of the week or so. He'll have the parts and everything. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I think, okay, I'm going to do this and this and this. Right away in the morning, things change. That's just kind of that. Lately it's been, I don't want to say stressful, but it just seems like every year we have to do our financial cash flow for the bank, you know, try to get all them numbers. You're working with a lot of numbers. Sometimes you, you get caught up on a figure and it's like, where am I making my mistake? And so that's been a little bit of weight on me lately trying to get done. And then we had our tax appointment of the day for doing our taxes. That's always kind of a uh, time of year too. You're paying chemicals, prepaying fertilizer and seed. And, it just seems like a lot of money is going out of the checkbook for all this stuff. And you sit there and you worry, I hope I have a good year. I hope the crops do good. I hope the prices do good. Uh, kind of at our end, we're not really, we're not greedy. We're not wanting to worry about, you know, bringing in huge dollars. But we just want to make sure we're able to get all our bills paid and not have to worry about that. So that's just stuff that kind of weighs on our mind. I think it weighs on every farmer. It weighs on anybody with whatever job you have. If you work in town, if you work wherever, it's the bills that sometimes it's like, oh, mailman, quit coming to my mailbox. I even try to take my mailbox off and then he brings it up and puts it in my porch. So then I lock the door and then he puts a sign. Hey, I stuck it on your back porch. You can't get away from the bills sometimes. Main thing is we keep trying, we keep moving along. Don't let that stuff weigh you down. It's just one of the things, you know, like they say, when the tougher gets tougher and you get down, you get tougher. I don't know, something like that, but uh, <laughs> trying to analyze myself and I don't know if it's working. It seems like Cooper and his friends have been coming out here at night. They've been doing some work. I think a little later this morning, there'll be a semi-tractor pulling in that they're gonna do some work on. Like I said, it's so fun when the kids come out here. Last night, I come home, a bunch of the boys are out here. I think one girl, Lizzie, was here. That'd be Presley's girlfriend, but it was nice. You got to come in, pick on them a little bit, and then up to the house I go. Somebody asked, where's the chocolate milk time? You know what? <laughs> I bought two gallons of milk this last week. I just went to the fridge to grab the chocolate milk with all the kids running around here lately. They've been drinking all my chocolate milk. Oh. <laughs> but I wouldn't change it. They can help themselves. They know when they're out here, our stuff is theirs and they help themselves. That's okay. Russell asked, he says, DC, with all the things that happened last year and all the things you guys went through, I'm so glad you guys didn't give up and he's right it's in god's hand he took you know cole made a point in one of his videos when the storm hit i'm i'm taking it through the storm all the corn damage we had we had neighbors that had it way way worse damage than we did but i know when it's your place and it's your crop and everything that you put so much hard work into it is it's very hard when you first go out there i'm sure we had some tears in our eyes you look at that stuff all the hard work we had put into the crop and it was looking so good within you know 10 minutes boom it's it's some of it was gone and then building damage and stuff we had but cole mentioned in one of his videos you know you got to look at it and like hey we could stand here pout all day cry whatever but a lot of times after a storm or a disaster or something a guy needs to step back it always looks worse at that time when it happens. And once you actually get in there and start cleaning up, yes, it's a lot of work. It, it gets, you know, a lot of stress to you. But in our group with Mama Corn Star, Summer, Jay, uh, Cole and Cooper and me, we just kind of put it together. We had a couple neighbors, Justin and his son Austin pitched in. We all kind of helped each other. And when you got friends like that and stuff, you kind of, we kind of, I don't really want this to sound funny, but things like that, we kind of have to joke around when we're working and stuff. And then we laugh and we kind of, it just takes that pressure off. Now, if I was there all by myself trying to take care of that, 
ah, oh, it'd be horrible, but we share that stress together, if you want to say that. So we each know we'll work together, we'll get things done. And that's how everybody does it. You just got to, we're, we're really in a very, very nice neighborhood where we are. People pitch in and help each other during down times. And I've said it before, like when my dad died, we weren't the type that we normally like to be there to help people, but never really thought about people helping us. So like when my family member Wade came to me and said, hey, me and my dad want to come over and help you guys plant corn and whatever. At first, my mind was like, no, I, I will be fine. We'll be fine. And I wasn't fine. And I talked to another friend. He goes, you know what? Wade would have not called you up if he didn't mean it. You need to take him up on his offer because people want to help. And once I did stuff like that, you just it takes a lot of pressure off of you. So don't be scared to ask for help either, guys. We've all need help and stuff, and I've learned that in the past year now. If I do need help, it's okay to ask. Or just call up that person and say, hey, can you please help me? You'll be amazed. And then you can turn around and help them. So good question. Good question, Russell.